Shakers. We are ass kickers. Get while I'm still. I've been listening in on old Charlie, and he isn't such a bad fellow. He's more of a kinder, gentler redneck. And as luck would have it, his wife is expecting. Man in that situation usually doesn't care who he works for, as long as he's still above ground. <sighs> Poor sap starts blubbering when the two of them talk about names. Right now, it's between Bocephus and Thomas Lee. Anyway, his guys have the church locked down, and all of them are more of the shoot first, let God sort them out variety of redneck. You get your hands on Charlie, though. He'll do what he's told without putting up much of a fuss. All your intel's been updated. You going back to the motel? After I get something to eat, I'll see you when you're done dealing with these inbred assholes. Motherfucker out of here! I found him! Come on! Hey, numb nuts, he's right there! Get shot, y'all are screwed! Come <laughs> on! 
here now. I ain't seen him. I know he was here. Y'all can stop looking when he's dead. Check over there, boys. Not here. He's here! Send your men to the First Baptist Church. Those Dixie heathens have been handled. I'll have some of my men come right over. And thanks. Donovan, John. Mr. Donovan, you understand that by appearing before this committee, you have explicitly waived your constitutional rights in regards to counsel and self-incrimination. Sure. And you further acknowledge that by appearing before this committee, you agree to disclose all information pertaining to the events that occurred in New Bordeaux during the summer and fall of 1968. <laughs> I wouldn't be sitting here if I didn't. You were an operative in the Central Intelligence Agency from 1953 to 1969, is that correct? That's right. When did you arrive in Vietnam? August of 1961. Please describe for this committee the actions you took during your time in Vietnam. I spent a couple months in Saigon, then I was transferred to a base in Laos. I was operated by the Special Activities Division. We trained and equipped the Hmong and then turned them loose on the NVA. We're running arms and supplies via the Ho Chi Minh Trail. And you worked with Lincoln Clay in what eventually became the Phoenix Program. Within a year or so, Lincoln was heading up his own PRU. We'd cross over into Vietnam and locate enemy targets and either kill them or bring them back for interrogation. <laughs> Just thinking about it? Jesus Christ. You wouldn't believe the shit we did to those cocksuckers. A few moments later. Got him. Get me what those motherfuckers did to this place, Mr. Clay. I won't either.
This man's name is Jesse. We were just having ourselves a little conversation about witchy do say. Listen, I ain't done nothing, you hear? I don't know anything. I, I was just taking a walk and walking down the street and, and she scrammed me, is all. You a Dixie Mafia? No. Yes. I mean, shit. I did it for the money, you hear? I, I ain't got nothing personal against y'all. I don't even carry a gun. Where's Doucette? He's... He's out of the abandoned amusement park to the west of here. Band Saturdays? What the hell is he doing out there? From what I heard, it's because you've been tearing things up. And Georgie, Georgie's on a goddamn warpath. He wants Richie dead. So Richie, he grabbed what was left of the heroin and took off. Said he was going to lay low until he could settle things with Georgie. How many men he got with him? Hell, I don't know. All of them. Hand me that knife. No, no, please. No, I ain't done nothing to y'all. Please, I, I'm begging you. My mom, my mom, my mom. Go on, get. He could want to do set. He ain't no threat to nobody. Let him run back home to his mama. If you wrong, there'll be hell to pay. sense about this, man. Richie needs to work this shit out with Georgie. Well, he ain't got no fucking chores. Huh? Take your name. Turn that motherfucker inside out. Welcome to Baron Saturday's Fun Park. We're sure happy to have you with us today. So put your troubles aside and enjoy yourself. You never know what that dirty old Baron's got waiting for you round the corner. <laughs> Phyllis, over here! Follow my lead, dipshits! I'm done playing with this asshole! He's got me jammed! Don't die, bitch! I ain't through with you! Got a 
something else called this place home to. Something evil. And it was watching. Waiting. Now say what you will about the life of a slave, but those days brought the Negro folk closer to God. Saved many a soul from the lake of fire, and it did. But soon they started backsliding, returning to the ways of their African ancestors. And an elder named Papa Virgil led them back to that old heathen practice known as And good old Papa Virgil, well, he took on a new name. Baron Saturday. That evil darkness knew this was his time. And women. I'm not here to steal your heroin, Richie. I'm here to make you pay for what you did to Sammy and Ellis Robinson. I didn't have nothing to do with that! I watched you stab Ellis in the gut. I couldn't do nothing about it then, but I sure as hell can now. Oh, God damn it! None of that was my idea, you hear? It was all Georgie, him and his old man. They wanted y'all gone, not me. Oh. 
What was I supposed to do? Say no? Either that or make sure that I was dead. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, please. Please. Listen. Listen. Just decent thing would be to let a man get in a prayer before you kill him. You can pray on the way up. When I saw Richie Doucette hanging from that Ferris wheel, I felt a profound sense of disbelief. Nothing like this had ever happened before. You mobsters killed each other all the time, but it was generally a small, contained event. Some greaseball is eating spaghetti and meatballs at his favorite restaurant and gets popped in the head. But this was different. Even then, even before I knew who killed him, I knew that Richie had been put on display. Lincoln was trained in psychological warfare by the CIA. He wanted to terrify the mob, wanted them to know he was going to kill every last one of them and that none of them would be able to stop him. <laughs> <laughs>